The White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator, Dr. Deborah Bricks, made the rounds yesterday trying to clean up you-know-who's comments about disinfectant. And she backed up, or it seemed like she did, some of these claims. Take a look. That was a dialogue he was having between the DHS scientist and himself um, for information that he had received and he was discussing. Um, we have made it clear, and he, when he turned to me, I made it clear, and he understood that it was not as a treatment. And I think that kind of dialogue will happen. It bothers me that this is still in the news cycle because I think we're missing the bigger pieces of what we need to be doing as an American people to continue to protect one another. And I think the president made it clear that physicians had to study this. I think I've made it clear that this was amusing, as you, dis as you describe. You think she's caught between a rock and a hard place, uh, Joy? You know, I'm wearing this scarf because I kind of feel sorry for the woman. It's an homage to Dr. Burks. But um, I, I feel like at this point, she's less of a doctor and more like a, uh, an elderly care nurse to this guy. Like, he's running around the house in his pajamas yelling at the TV set. They're not getting to up out of bed until late. I don't know what, he's, he's losing it. He's like the grandpa who walks out in the middle of the birthday party with his pants off. And then Dr. Burks's surrogate at the party has to say, oh, grandpa is just liberating himself. Isn't he funny? Like that. You know, it's it's scary uh, to to see what's going on in this country. It's frightening, and I I agree with yeah. you, Whoopi. She should have stood up at that press conference and said, "I object to Jacques. He is speaking with craziness. They do not put Lysol into your body." But she's trying to walk this yeah. fine line. You see? Yeah, Megan, Pathetic. you think that's what uh, Dr. Burks signed up for? Look, she has an incredible career for decades, and she's, I've actually been doing a lot of just, you know, I think like all of us soul searching about these frontline people, doctors, people that go in the field of medicine, and I think um, she's doing the best that she can. I, d I don't know if tonally she can jump up in the middle of a press conference and correct the president, because she may have worded things differently in that interview, yes, but I still feel nothing but compassion for these doctors and people that are the heads of all these, you know, the CDC and places like that, because this virus, we still don't know what we're dealing with. We still don't know when we're going to have a vaccine. We're still, as Americans, sheltering in place. And I just, this sort of inside the palace walls soap opera drama, like, I have a harder time sort of coming coming to it than I did when I was in studio before the pandemic happened. And I think a lot of Americans feel the same way. And I, for one, don't want her or Dr. Fauci to go anywhere. Sonny, you think that uh, Dr. Burks is, is uh, part of the problem? I do. I do think she's part of the problem. And it gives me no pleasure to say that. Uh, you know, if you watch uh, that interview with uh, Jake Tapper uh, in its uh, totality, she actually implied that the media was to blame for that story to still be in the news cycle. And um, I believe at this point, Dr. Burks is complicit in what's going on because uh, when there are times like this, uh, good people with integrity need to stand up and need to speak truth to power. Um, you can't be complicit in a time like this, Dr. Burks. And, and, and so um, I think she has become part of the problem. I mean, we had her on our show, I believe, uh, April 15th. And um, she said a lot and said nothing. It was like one big word salad. You know, it was, it's time for her to speak the facts and to speak factually. And I know I asked her specifically about the lack of testing, not only uh, in cities, um, but in rural areas where we just don't have the data because they're testing deserts. And she really didn't have factual answers for me on that day. Um, right. and, and, and so, you know, I'm, I know that she's had a storied career, but at this point, she is losing um, her integrity. And I, um, I'm, I'm really surprised and disappointed in Dr. Burks. Very, very disappointed. Well, I, I, I have to say, that the reason that the story is still in the news is if you have little kids, you have to constantly explain to them, no, you cannot drink bleach. You cannot do this. You know, the last person that really even 
suggested anyone use bleach was a man called Dr. Mengele, and he did bad things to people. So we don't, we don't discuss bleach. I have all of the compassion for everybody because it's not an easy job. But one of those journalists sitting there should have stood up and said, no, sir, that is a dangerous thing to say because you can actually kill people. She should have said, no, sir. And yes, she should have jumped up. That's part of the reason they're there. They're there to protect us and to make sure we are getting the facts. And it wasn't a joke, because that's not how you do a joke. You say, at the moment, you know, well, why not this? I'm just kidding. That's how you do that. You don't say, oh, I'm just, I was just kidding the next day. He made a mistake. Nobody called him on it. And she didn't really call him on it. She should have said, no, sir, no one can ingest bleach ever, no one, because it kills. That's what they needed to do, and they, nobody did it.